Hi, everybody. So, in the last video, we were starting to do a little bit of uh, wing tip work. Uh, we're continuing with the wing tip work, actually, but we were actually starting to get into putting the uh, nut plates onto the wing tip. In this video, uh, what's happened is we've lost some footage where I've actually started working on the cutouts for the LED lights. So if you look back in the Wings playlist, you'll see where I've, or it might not be in the Wings, it might be in an alternate playlist, where I worked on uh, constructing an LED light kit for my plane. I know I must have talked about it a thousand, I'm sure I've talked about it. Anything to where I say I'm sure I've talked about, I've probably talked about it a thousand times, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, these are the LED, fly LEDs uh, from Australia. Great product, great price, fun little project. You can get them fully made. You can make, you can buy them so that you have to solder everything in. And I would suggest that if you're making a plane, you really need to know how everything works. I know it seems ridiculous. Oh, I can't, can't I just be a pilot? Uh, if you're really building a plane from scratch, hanging the engine, doing all of it, you you really need to know how it all works. I know it's a lot, and it is, but it's totally worth it. So. Uh, I suggest buying the kit. Plus, you know, you save some dough. So you, the, the, the instructions also come with a nice cutout template, uh, and that's what you see me doing here. Uh, the reason I did the cutout template was I wanted to uh, finally put on the nut plates. Now that I'd put a couple on onto the wingtip for the main attachment points, when I see that it was no big deal, I said, well, shit, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to put on the nut plates for the uh uh, lens cap, the lens cover. So here I am. Uh, please note, no more ghetto painters taped onto my head uh, masks for me. No, no, no. Now these have rubber bands. It's one step up. And you really can't uh, set that rivet into a nut plate. And so, what, so there's one nut plate on each side of the lens. Uh, you really can't set it uh, I mean, you can set it with a rivet gun, but it just makes me very nervous, and you really can't set it with the squeezer unless you've got that hole cut. So, hey, double whammy. I need to cut those holes out so that I can get my lights on, and I need to do it so I can get the, the uh, nut plates on. Hey, it's a win-win. So now it's back to doing all the nut plates on the side. And there are 42 nut plates in each uh, wingtip. And each one you have to screw in. So this is the explanation that I was talking about in the last video and I'll talk about it now. So what you do is you take the number six screw, which is the sc screw size that you use for this. Uh, you put it into your little uh, nut plate backwards. Then you screw that into the hole from the outside and when the nut plate itself kind of buttresses up to the wingtip, then you can hold it in place and you can use a number 40 drill bit and just pop two holes in it real quick and then unscrew it and it's perfect. And now that you've got all those drilled, it's easy peasy just to go back through and rivet it on. So what you do is you, uh, you Clico, well you, you can Clico both of them on to make sure it fits right. But you take one of the Clicos out, you put the rivet in the other one, you rivet that, I use a squeezer of course, and then you take the rivet out of the other one and put the rivet, I mean, the Clico out of the other one, put the rivet in, and then rivet the second one. Uh, one thing that I would suggest, and the instructions suggest this as well, uh, this is fiberglass, and, oh, I'm sorry, real quick though, before you do that, you deburr both of the rivet holes on the wingtip to flush mount a 426 uh, rivet, a flathead rivet. And when you rivet, Right, so you're going to be pushing one side against fiberglass, and fiberglass is a little bit, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little brittle, right? You don't want to go crunching this stuff around if you, you don't have to. So what Vans actually suggests is taking a little bit of a longer rivet and squeezing it. It will squeeze uh, wider than the size of the hole diameter, which is really what you want, but at the same time you don't put so much pressure on the fiberglass that it winds up making a crack. And every single time you go to rivet, or every single time you take a drill towards this thing, all you think is, for the love of God, don't let me f this thing up. 
because I've looked up the price of replacing this, and that it's not it doesn't make me very happy. And it's like okay, I've got a I got 42 nut plates. That's three holes a piece. That's 126 holes. That's all I got to do. Three holes. 84 rivets. Just let me get through all of them without screwing this shit up. So what you do is you get yourself into a nice rhythm like you see me doing here. That way you don't really think about it. As you can see, no one's come along and messing with me. For once. I do love the hangar. I love being part of this club. Uh, it's interesting because whenever I'm trying to build, there's always... I always see someone. Always. I actually got to just run out there this afternoon for like 15 minutes to get something out of... Uh, a, a locked uh, a locker for one of the members. I, I guarantee I'll see at least two people while I'm out there. I love it. So, uh, so once the uh, nut plates are installed, uh, what you do also need to do is you need to go and deburr the main screw hole for each one because you've dimpled the skin. So you've dimpled the metal skin on the on the wing. So what you need to do is now you need to go back and you need to deburr the main hole in each nut plate so that it can accept the dimpled skin. And so what I've done, uh, I actually took a Dremel tool that was a stone grinder, and I took it to the bench grinder, and I kind of made it like a 100-degree uh, grinding stone. And that worked pretty well, but it gave a little bit of a rough textured finish. So what I just use instead is my hand deburr tool. I've basically calculated that it takes me 40 turns to get the depth just right for it to accept the skin. And it makes a much cleaner deburr, I think so. So that's just what we're doing here. Uh, putting on nut plates and deburring holes and then test fitting the thing. So I do believe in the next video we are done and we'll be test fitting this. So see you soon.